Hello everyone, my name is Arohi and welcome to my channel. So guys, YOLO V10 is released and this is the official paper. It is released by Tsinghua University. Let's see what is new in YOLO V10. These are the features which are introduced in YOLO V10. Let's understand them one by one. So let's start with this uh, NMS free training. To understand what NMS free training is, let's understand the concept of NMS first. So NMS is a post-processing step used in object detection tasks to remove duplicate bounding boxes around the detected objects. It basically ensures that each object is represented by only one bounding box. This step is necessary because without it, the output would include many duplicate detections which will lead to a cluttered and confusing results, right? The drawback of NMS is its computational cost and inference time. So let's understand this. So NMS involves sorting of bounding boxes based on their confidence scores. And then it performs comparisons to check for overlap, which can be computationally expensive, especially when you have large number of detected boxes. So this increases the inference time because the post-processing steps add additional computational work, right? Now let's see how this proposed approach, this NMS free training approach worked, okay? So in NMS free training approach, the model is designed and trained in such a way that it naturally avoids generating uh, multiple bounding boxes for the same object. And this is achieved through consistent dual assignments which ensure that each object is assigned a single unique bounding box during both training and inference okay so we'll discuss all these things in detail but right now just understand that the nms uh, nms free training means you are not going to have multiple bounding boxes for the single object every object will be assigned a single unique bounding box only during training and inference and it is done with the help of uh, consistent dual assignment now what is the benefit of this NMS free training? So since the model avoids generating duplicate boxes, so there is no need to apply NMS after the training or initial predictions, right? So this eliminates the post processing step entirely. And by removing this NMS step, the overall time taken for inference is reduced. So the model can produce the final output directly from its prediction without needing the additional computational resources to filter out the overlapping boxes. So that's how this NMS free training helped. Next proposed feature is spatial channel decoupled downsampling. And this you can see under this efficiency driven model. Okay, here efficiency driven model design. And now let's understand this concept. So what is downsampling? Downsampling is a process in CNN where the spatial dimensions, which is height and width, okay, of the input are reduced while potentially increasing the depth. Depth means the number of channels. So current approach, the standard YOLO models, how they work, let's discuss that and then we will talk about the proposed method, okay. So in standard YOLO models, we use three by three uh, convolutions, th standard convolution three by three, and with a stride of two, which simultaneously downsamples the spatial dimension and increase the channel dimension. So this method has a high computational cost. So guys, don't worry if you are not understanding the concept right now, I'm going to explain the whole concept with the example, then you'll understand surely, okay? Now let's talk about the proposed approach, which is decouple the spatial and the channel operations to make downsampling more efficient. So the idea here is to separate the operation that downsample the spatial dimension and those that increase the channel dimension will separate these two tasks. So current approaches like the standard YOLO model, they adjust the channel dimension and the spatial dimensions together at one step, which is highly computational method. And in this proposed method of YOLO V10, they are performing these two steps separately. So for that, they introduced two concepts. One is point-wise convolution and second is depth-wise convolution. Let's understand these two things one by one. So the purpose of point-wise convolution is to adjust the channel dimension without affecting the spatial dimension. For this task, they are using one by one convolution to process 
each pixel separately. Let's understand this with example. So suppose you have an input feature of size 32 into 32 and you have 64 channels in it. Okay. And now let's say we are applying this one by one convolution on it. Okay. This point wise convolution one by one on it. And this might increase the channels to 128 while keeping the spatial size the same, which is 32 into 32. So you can look into this picture. So we are only increasing the channel here and the height and width of the feature map is same. So this is the one task. Now in one step, we are doing only one step here. We are only increasing the number of channels. We are not increasing the height and width. We have the second method, which is depth wise convolution. The purpose of this depth wise convolution is to reduce the spatial dimension while maintaining the newly adjusted channel dimensions. OK, so what it means is we will only work on height and width of the feature map over here. We are not going to work on the channels. OK, so how they are doing it? They are using a separate three by three filter to each channel, reducing the spatial dimensions by half. By half means earlier the size of the feature map was uh, 32 into 32 and now it is 16 into 16. This is how this proposed approach worked. We divided the task into two parts. And what happens when we do this? In current approaches, when we combine the spatial dimension reduction and the channel adjustment in one step, we used a single 3 by 3 convolutional layer. And in proposed approach, we separate the process into two steps and this two step approach can lead to more efficient computations by first adjusting the channels and then reducing the spatial dimensions. Overall benefit of this decoupled method results in fewer computations and parameters while achieving similar downsampling. Here, the resources are being used efficiently, leading to faster inference time. And by implementing this decoupled approach, the model achieve efficient downsampling, making it more suitable for real time applications where speed and performance are critical. The next proposed method is rank guided block design. This rank guided block design is a method to make model work better and faster. In YOLO, same basic building block is traditionally used across all stages of the model. Okay. And the researchers of YOLO Witten observed that different stages of the network might have different level of redundancy, meaning some stages may contain more redundant information. Redundant information means repetitive pattern or less essential information. Okay. Then the others. To solve this problem of repetitiveness, author came up with a new way of building stages of the model. They looked at each stage of the model, checked how unnecessary information each stage has. And if the stage has a lot of unnecessary information, they used a new kind of building block that's better at getting rid of this uh, redundancy and they call it a compact inverted block for knowing the redundancy at different stages they used a intrinsic rank analysis so in this methodology the intrinsic rank of the last convolutional layer in each stage of the network is analyzed what i'm saying is that we have several stages and the convolutional layer of the last convolutional layer of each stage will be analyzed and the layer contains the useful information will have the higher rank and the layer contains greater redundancy, meaning some information might be redundant or less essential will have lower rank. Okay. So how this rank guided block allocation work? First, they will sort all the stages based on the intrinsic ranks and then they will replace the blocks in stages which have higher redundancy means lower rank and they are doing it with the help of the CIV and after that they will continue replacing the blocks in stages with increasing ranks until the performance degradation is noticed. So this is how it works. Next is lightweight classification heads. 
So classification heads are the final layer in the neural network that assign labels to the detected object. So lightweight classification heads are designed to be efficient, reducing the computational burden without compromising accuracy. So I'm still reading the paper, but these are the features which I found uh, useful to discuss. And I hope this video is helpful. So guys, if you like my content, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.